What is up guys? Welcome back to another Geek of What video and today I've got a super special one for you. I promise the puns will get better as we progress. I'm going to be reviewing the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super and 2060 Super and comparing them to the existing cards in the lineup to see just how they stack up, which boy oh boy has been a lot of work. I'm also going to be explaining what the hell is going on with the RTX lineup now in 2019. Before I do that though, if you aren't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and ding dong that notification bell so you never miss another video. I've got some RTX super builds coming in the next few days, uh, some of the first on YouTube which you do not want to miss out on. Wait for it. Oh my good, look at look how clean that is. Now, the NVIDIA RTX lineup was actually launched in September of last year, so 2018, and this uh, super launch represents the first major overhaul in that lineup since its release. NVIDIA will actually be dropping uh, entirely the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080, which leaves the lineup looking something a little bit like this. I'd guess that NVIDIA's aim with this launch not only to refresh the cards, but also to make the lineup a bit more simple for the end user. I'm not entirely convinced if it does that based on having the GTX and RTX designations and then having the standard cards, the TIs and the supers, but I suppose being a bit of a changeover period from the standard non-RTX GPUs uh, to those with ray tracing enabled does create uh, some complications. Now you will notice here as well if you look carefully at pricing, it does of course appear to be creeping up and creeping up substantially over previous generations. The 2060 or 2060 supercards are now quite a long way from the ballpark figure you'd pay for a 960 or 1060 of yesteryear, but they are significantly more powerful cards, so that's not overly a massive criticism. Now I've actually got in the Founders Editions of both these cards, 2060 and 2070 Super, and Nvidia have uh, announced that a 2080 Super will be following very shortly. Now these are available with these coolers directly from Nvidia, and I was a huge fan of them in my RTX 2060 review in the card section here, and I'm a massive fan to this day. The only major change with the super uh, sort of design is that metallic shiny front plate and I think it actually looks fantastic. It won't be to everyone's taste but I think it adds a more gamery edge. We will of course have cards from adding board partners such as Asus, Gigabyte and MSI following on very shortly and they'll no doubt cost even more than the RRP for these cards so you can see where my slight pricing concerns originate. Uh, the 2070 and 2080 Super are larger cards with a larger heatsink and also have the multi GPU connector at the top as well if you wanted to run uh, two of these cards. Running three or four is not really an option with Nvidia SLI uh, anymore. Uh, now, the card here is bigger, but you've got two fans on both of the units, and temperature-wise, they stack up pretty well, but more on that in the benchmark section. What's perhaps most impressive is that the cards retain their really power-efficient RTX design. The 2060 Super has a single 8-pin power connector, which really is not a lot, and it's a similar story with the 2070 Super, an 8 and a 6-pin compared to often the 8 and 8 and often an additional 6 found on high-end GPUs from Nvidia and AMD in previous years. I'm a massive fan of these Founders Editions designs, the wraparound backplate, uh, which keeps the card nice and level in your system, is going to prevent it from sagging. And in general, the design is really, really premium and is going to fit with most system aesthetics. There's not quite so much RGB on these, but if you want that option, Asus or MSI, for example, is the way to go. We've also got a similar I.O. to the non-super derivatives uh, with DisplayPort, HDMI and USB-C on both cards, in addition to DVI on the 2060 for, low, for running sorry, lower power, slightly lower overhead monitors with less resolution or frame rate than that DisplayPort standard. Now, the standout features of all the RTX cards, of course, is ray tracing, and it's the major difference between the RTX and GTX lineups. Now, ray tracing basically reimagines the way that light is dealt with in an in-game environment and can make shadows and reflections so much more immersive. It stops them from just being blurry in puddles and stuff, for example. And the best example is the side-by-side -side here uh, in Battlefield 5. Now, these cards actually address a couple of the major issues that ray tracing uh, had at the RTX launch. First and foremost, they provide more power. Ray tracing 
it is quite power intensive. It can knock quite a bit out of your frame rate. And these cards help to remedy that as you'll see in the benchmark section. The other major issue with ray tracing as well back in September was that there wasn't even one game uh, that officially supported it. Thankfully now there's quite a few. There's Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 5, Assetto Corsa, and more and more titles are confirmed and coming by the day. Now I put these cards and my existing RTX cards through their paces in a few different benchmarks. Cinebench's R15 GPU benchmark saw a couple of weirdly fantastic results for the 2060 and 2060 Super compared to the rest of the cards, and the same thing happened in 3D Mark's Fire Strike and Time Spy, the latter of which is a ray tracing DX12 benchmark. Uh, now, these didn't mirror over to the real world performance, but it's just interesting to know. And it is worth noting that I did, of course, have these cards before launch, uh, which means some titles aren't going to be fully optimised for them. With that being said, I also ran Project Cars 2. It's a good underlying benchmark at 1440p and 4K. Uh, the game, these make it look easy to run, but at 4K, it looks utterly fantastic. Uh, Ultra settings, a really, really enjoyable game to play. I also use Shadow of the Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark with a few different variations of ray tracing and DLSS, the latter of which supports better resolution scaling in terms of performance, and saw some pretty good results there as well in terms of frame rate. Moving on, I also put these through their paces in GTA 5, another hugely popular title, with benchmark results running back years and years, and these two cards did not disappoint. Uh, finally, I also did a bit of temperature testing using Firmark for 15 minutes and recording the maximum temperature with all the fans and everything on default and no overclock uh, in MSI Afterburner. Now, some of the numbers are going to be slightly hotter than the add-in board partner cards, but they're nothing dangerous, nothing's thermal throttling, nothing's slowing down to prevent itself from overheating. So in my eyes, it's pretty much all good there. Now, with the game and benchmarks out of the way, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. NVIDIA have actually got an offer that's worth mentioning, where if you buy an RTX card before a certain date, you get a couple of free games worth like $90. Uh, but I'll put all the details in the description below, as well as links to all the RTX graphics cards. Would I recommend these cards? Yeah, yeah I would. I mean, they're discontinuing uh, a few of the non-super cards, as discussed earlier anyway, so these will be the only ones you're able to buy. And all these really do is reaffirm NVIDIA's place at the top as the kings of uh, the GPU market in 2019. AMD, in my opinion, are going to really, really struggle uh, to regain market share, especially against that proprietary RTX technology, as more and more titles start to support it. NVIDIA have definitely played the long game by going, you know what, it's not going to be open source, not everyone can use it but it could create a really massive incentive to go for an NVIDIA GPU. I mean, Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the result is a bit night and day in some instances, even if that FPS hit is sadly a little bit hefty. If you enjoyed today's video though, you know what to do. Give it a big old like rating, get subscribed, and ding dong that notification bell. Ding! If you haven't already, so you never miss another video and my RTX Super Builds coming in the next few days. As always, though, we'll see you in the next Geek or What video.